When I was eight months old, my, my parents almost killed me. They beat my head open and left me to die in a motel room. I have a big scar on the back of my head, and my head over here is all dented. I had three craniotomies on my head. And, and uh, I was in foster care for almost five years until the age of five and a half. And, and then uh, at five and a half years old, I, I got taken from the foster home. And I got taken in by the Sheptoks, Rudy and Joanne Sheptok. He's Polish, or was Polish, he's passed away. She's Italian, she's still living, and she's in Florida. Year, I was actually their tenth child. They had six natural, and I was the fourth adopted one. And they adopted a grand total of 30 children. So they, they raised 37 children. They had 10 girls and 22 boys, and all the girls were Marys. Mary Ann, Mary Frances, Mary Jean, Mary Sue, Mary Claire, Mary Christine, Mary Margaret, Mary Grace, Mary Ellen, and Mary Elizabeth. We spent a lot of time being on the news. We, we were on the evening news, and it was seen by, by then governor of New Jersey, Thomas Kane, back in the early 80s. So he figured he'd come down and visit our family. And so one day he was going to a meeting in his helicopter, and he's like, we're stopping by the Shep Talks. When I was, I was working at Shands Hospital, I began there in 1988. I worked there for about six years. Then I had a little falling out with my boss, you know, and then and I, I just got mad and walked off the job. That was one of my youthful indiscretions. And then I got my last check. I went back to New Jersey, and, and uh, when, when the money ran out is when I became homeless. And actually, well, since then, I've gotten out of homelessness, and I've fallen back in, you know, and so it's kind of been an up and down sort of thing. Until like these last five years, you know, I've I just kind of got, gotten into this whole thing of, of just fighting for, for better solutions to homelessness. Contrary to what some people think, homeless people actually oftentimes do work. Many times they just don't make a living wage, and so they can't really afford to pay rent. And so that, that was my case. And I was working at the labor hall, but there would be some days I didn't get out early in the morning. And so I'd be sitting at the labor hall watching TV. Waiting, waiting for a job assignment, and so uh, I, I kept seeing the news about uh, George Bush having gone to Iraq based on lies, and and uh, it, it just bothered me. And so I left Florida on on Bush's birthday, uh, July 6, 2005, and I began coming up the coast. And I got into D.C. on the night of July 31st, 2005. And then I got involved in the peace movement. You know, I, I went to several different war protests. I actually got to meet Jesse Jackson at one of them. When they came down to the shelter in June of 2006, they said the mayor at that time, Tony Williams, was going to close the shelter, which held 240 men, and open up another one, which held 120. And it's like, what are we going to do about this? So out of 240 guys, about 12 guys formed the Committee to Save Franklin Shelter, and Marianne guided us through D.C. government to show us who was who, you know, who to talk to about different things. And... Uh, and her, her mantra was always, you know, that she wanted the homeless to, to speak up for themselves, to, to self-advocate. I learned how to use email shortly thereafter. So in November 2006, five, five months into my homeless advocacy, uh, a guy named David Pirtle said to me, Eric, everyone else on the, on the committee can use a computer except you. If you can't use a computer, we can't use you. And then he took me down to the library, and in 15 minutes he got my Yahoo account opened. And there are now people who curse today that he showed me how to do email. Uh, so I, I began to send emails to, to the, the uh, people in D.C. government who maintained the government buildings because the shelter was a government building and to let them know about needed repairs. And if I sent an email to one or two people and, and nothing got done, I would CC about 30, 40, sometimes 50 people and then it would get done because they, they, they couldn't say that they didn't get the message because all these folk got CC'd when you got the message. If, if folk were mistreated in the shelters or on the streets or anywhere, you know, then I would begin to email DC government about that. If, if they did nothing, I would uh, contact the media. It's and very hard to get out of homelessness because uh, they don't have affordable housing. Uh, I mean, the average rent for a two-bedroom in DC is $1,500 a month. You know, that's pretty steep. I mean, you got some mortgages that'll that are lower than that. You know, and and so what happens a lot of times is when you become homeless, you get so used to doing things like day labor or farm work. I've, I've done farm work too, and so like from '94 until 2005, I was doing a lot of day labor and a lot of farm work, and you, you don't really make a living wage doing doing, doing those kinds of jobs. And so you, you get so so caught up in in your day to day 
struggles of just making sure you got food and you know food in your stomach and clothes on your back, then you don't really work on improving your situation a lot of times. And then when you when you look back, it's been one, two, three, four, five years, you know, and and it's like wow, you know, I've, I've actually been in the situation for this long. So while I would love to get out of homelessness, I'm 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 not I'm not just gonna you know do something that that's gonna prevent me from advocating for the homeless. A lot of bad things happen, I'm sure we know that, but, but you know, one of the really sad things that I've seen happen is where they actually have homeless people doing evictions. You know, some, someone gets evicted, you know, because they couldn't pay their rent, and, and, and then what happens is, like, these, there are these contractors who, who are under contract for the landlord to, to do evictions of people who didn't pay their rent. And, and so these contractors will go to places where the homeless people eat, and, and they'll pick up people you know, who, who they can take down to these apartments and, and have them take all the stuff out and put it on the sidewalk and, 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 they'll, and they'll pay them for doing that. And so you have homeless people helping to make other people homeless. 